Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think, I think a highlight of that speech uh, from the government whip uh, was the fact that he sort of moved on from thanking Pansy Wong to congratulating Ann Tolley. And I think that's, <laughs> that's, 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 prob that's probably about it. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do want to echo the, um, the comments that have been made about the staff. And I think Rodney Hyde went through the list very well. I won't, I'm not proposing to repeat that, but to endorse uh, his comments about the people who work here. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I think you've mainly treated me fairly. I think the only injustice... <laughs> I think the only injustice I feel was the time that you tossed me for Chris Carter's comment, uh, Mr <laughs> Speaker, and, and uh, uh, I was certainly relieved when he got shifted down here. Uh, I didn't think our voices were that, were that uh, similar, Mr Speaker, but you uh, clearly couldn't differentiate us on that occasion. Uh, Mr Speaker, there have been some disasters, uh, and um, I endorse the comments that Phil Goff made uh, about the importance of following up the promises with action. And I'm going to read a text which I received uh, 12 minutes ago. And it said, just chatting to a lady at Dog Park with the fat golden Labrador. Don't know. The, her insurance company told her over 100 grand when they set, assessed. She's got a big two-storey house. The piles are stuffed. The roof is stuffed. The garage needs replacing. And EQC said 22 grand. She's had structural engineers around that a day, and house has twisted around three chimneys, and they say it must be rebuilt. Uh, Mr. Speaker, stories like that are coming in from all over Christchurch. People are getting very distressed, and ministers who are in charge of the EQC have got to get that act together, especially the people who are on the phone lines, because, sir, the systems are not working, and that has resulted in a very poor Christmas. Mr Speaker, one doesn't get that sort of text um, unless one's involved and knows of other cases, uh, as, as, as I do. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do want to make a comment uh, on Pike River uh, and... Um, oh, Kate Wilkinson, I was here earlier, I'm not, I don't want to refer to her absence, but I'm sure uh, that she will be feeling as I do, um, as ministers that have been in charge of a review in that area in the question of mine safety, we are asking ourselves, is there anything else that we could have done that might have made a, dif made a difference? So we are, we will wait uh, obviously for the inquiries and, and the explanations as to what actually happened before we can go into those questions. Uh, but, sir, anyone who has worked in that area and, and not felt some distress uh, and personal questioning, uh, I, 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 think, I think all of, it, all of us have. Uh, Mr Speaker, I endorse the comments that uh, Phil Goff made around the importance uh, of getting uh, the bodies, the remains uh, from that mine. But also, uh, I want to say that it is important uh, that uh, people are paid. People are paid their entire wage pack packages and that people, both living and dead, get the bonuses to which they had earned and to which they are entitled. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's just basic decency uh, and, I, in my view, it's incumbent on the government to make sure that the system works to ensure that that happens, notwithstanding uh, our rules with regarding receivership. Uh, I think it, that is important and it will be a sign of a decent society. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I do want to follow uh, Chris Tremaine's theme uh, in relation to Pansy Wong. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, she jumped um, uh, before the inevitable firing occurred. Uh, Mr Speaker, she will run, but the issue will not go away. Uh, it is something that New Zealanders will want to find out more about and will find out more about uh, because, Mr Speaker, New Zealanders do not like anything that looks like corruption in our system, Mr Speaker. And in my opinion, this case, as it unfolds, will look like that. And it is just not acceptable. Now, Mr Speaker, I want to move on to uh, Mr Brownlee. I want to say that 
You know, we have good-natured banter across the House on occasions. I want to uh, congratulate him on his masterful handling of the House uh, over the last week, the last week or so. I, I felt relatively good being in here with six of my colleagues, uh, having six of my colleagues and myself in the House uh, on Saturday night while the Nats were voting uh, 58 uh, at uh, quarter past nine, quarter past nine on a, on a Saturday night. And then we are so busy that we get to 8 o'clock on Tuesday and we've got nothing to do. Uh, Mr Speaker, if, that, if, that, if, that's an indication, if that's an indication of the approach and the focus to detail that's going to continue on the behalf of the National Party next year, uh, then I welcome it and I, and I, and I thank him uh, for that. I think we will give him the title House Manager Supreme. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I just want to say that I've been searching for something all of this year. It's called the plan. I want to know where the plan is. We're told that it's got six points, and in fact we were told what they were at one stage. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember. Or six areas. Six areas. But I do want, no, I just, I want to comment on, I just want to comment on one, which is the major part of the plan, because it's one that I'm interested in, and one that I care a lot about. And that's the cycleways. The cycleways, uh, Mr Speaker, which are, which are going to create all of these jobs. Mr Speaker, I'm getting slightly sick of the Prime Minister opening, opening cycleways that I rode five years ago. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the idea that the Prime Minister goes because a little bit of gravel has been spread on a track and it's called a new cycleway and he opens it, and I must say to Kevin Haig, he is looking a bit of a tit going along and riding along those cycleways that many people have ridden along before. And I think the Greens should be embarrassed by being associated with these pretend new cycleways. There are going to be some, and that's, and that's going to be really good, uh, Mr Speaker. And I also want to say that a concrete highway from Cambridge to Carapiro is not a cycleway. It's not a cycleway, it's a bit of the road. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and, people, and people, need to, people need to know that. Well, it's certainly not a step change in the economy, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, I want to say that I've been looking for something else. I've been looking for the statistics that tell us that we're closing that wage gap with Australia. First of all, I looked at the statistics that we've generally used, the ones that the New Zealand li our library gives us from our statistics New Zealand and the Australian equivalent. And that has always shown that the gap has been widening. But as the Prime Minister gave us a new set of statistics, they were, they, I think it was fair to say they were heavily massaged. Most improbable approach to statistics is someone who, who did that. But, Mr Speaker, even the Prime Minister's massage statistics now tell us that that gap is getting bigger and that is why so many Kiwis and all of us know individuals, friends, family, uh, people who are, live in our constituencies who are going to Australia, one, because they have jobs, but two, because those jobs pay more and their standards of living are not only higher, but getting higher still. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to finish with a thought, and I think it will be a theme as we go forward, and I want to thank um, uh, a member of the National Party for suggesting uh, that this be the Labour Party theme. And it's a question, and it's a question which we're going to ask time and time again of Kiwis. Are you better off now than you were two years ago? And next year, we will be asking, are you better off now than you were three years ago when National was elected? Mr Speaker, some people are. Some people who are in the top 10% of the income brackets are certainly better off than they were. But, Mr Speaker, most Kiwis when they are asked the question, are you better off, will be honest and say no. And that is why they will say, we're going to wave, John, while you smile. <laughs>